President Barack Obama from the Pentagon declared that ISIS has lost up to 40% of the territory it once held. And this is a very important statement in the face of the critics around the strategy that the U.S. is using to control the Islamic State. In the past, he already declared that it was contained, that we were doing the right thing by using this special forces approach and the airstrikes. I think that the involvement of Russia really debilitated the Islamic State in the region. Also, France stepped up its fight. Margaret, we see that in a very rare uh, security meeting in the Pentagon, because normally he gets briefed at the White House, Obama went to the Pentagon and met with the top official. Ash Carter was by his side, uh, Joe Biden, the chief of staff. They were all in this meeting because I think they're trying to reassure the American public that after the San Bernardino attack and after the Paris attack, they are actively making sure that the country is protected. And not only that, that the strategy that they're putting forth is the is a, is a right one and is, is yielding results. Right, they have to say that they're doing something because the American public, they want to make sure that um, you know this doesn't hit us at home. And yeah. would you ever think that you would see Russia and the U.S. on the same side, both doing these airstrikes? I mean, granted, not in unison, but they're both combating ISIS. That's strange for me. It is something that definitely, it's, it's a point where the world is colliding right now and at the same time galvanizing around the idea that we have to stop the threat of terrorism coming from the media. Middle East. Also, we need to understand that this strategy of bombing the shit out of this region, although it's helping really decimate the Islamic State, also is forcing them to change the strategy and turn uh, into a more international approach. We saw the attacks in Paris, we saw the attack in Tunisia, and the constant threat of going international, because now that they're facing real military power in the region, mm -hmm. at the cost of many Syrians, there are being millions of Syrians being displaced. We don't have to, to leave that aside. That is part of the consequence. But we do see that they're being pushed to keep the, the momentum by going outside of the territory mm -hmm. and creating this terrorist ever-present fear that they thrive on. What do you make of the political pushback here that seems to be very against Muslims in the U.S. right now, especially politically in the political arena? You know, do you think that that's helping ISIS and their cause? They're saying, look, we're all disenfranchised. Yes, I think it definitely it's something that we've talked before here at the LIP, and, and many we agree that this Islamophobic feeling all around the world, but in this case in the United States, really shows that it's easy to disenfranchise these communities, to push a lot of Muslim youth that might not feel welcome in the Western communities into listening at least what ISIS has to say and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe giving them the chance to, ad to, to go and look, even. We need to prevent that. We need to be more vigilant about the language that we use when we refer to the Muslim populations in the Western civilization. But at the same time, now we see that the president is coming forward, trying to calm the United States by saying we have ISIS uh, already losing 40% of its territory once held now in this battle where we are using special operations and airstrikes to control the threat of terrorism.